Hi, welcome back to The Backpacker Coach. Today, I wanna to talk to you about something very special. I wanna to talk to you about how to do macro photography on a budget. So, you may be uh, totally new um, to macro photography. You haven't done macro photography. You uh, don't have a dedicated macro lens, and that's okay. Maybe you just wanna dip your toe into the water of macro photography for now, or maybe you know you're a decent photographer, but you've just never really done you know any you know macro photography before. So, whatever the case is, there's a couple small pieces of equipment that you can buy that will help you be able to kind of dip your toe into the water of of macro photography without having to spend a ton of money. So we're going to go over a few of those things, and I have them in front of me here and we're going to go over what those are. So the first one is the reverse ring. And what you do is you put that one on the front of your camera lens. You screw that on to the front, just like this. Screw that on, and then you actually attach this end to your camera instead of this end. That makes a very huge difference and I will show you in a minute what that looks like. But that's very inexpensive. The reverse ring here only costs 10 bucks. And when you put this onto your, you can put that on any lens. A reverse ring you can put on any lens at all and it will automatically will change that lens into a one-to-one -one lens meaning that whatever you take a picture of will be the exact same size one to one uh, on the um, sensor. So that makes a huge difference. And you can do that on from a 200 millimeter lens all the way to a 25 you know, or 14 millimeter lens. It doesn't matter. Um, the only thing is you have to get the right size ring that matches your camera, the front, and that's always on the front, and it'll say what size diameter your lens is. This one happens to be 52 millimeters, and so all I had to do is buy a 52 millimeter um, reverse ring, and you screw it on, and you're good to go. So next, you can also do these interchangeably, or you can do them all together, and that is extension tubes. Extension tubes are great because they, they also help with macro photography. They will end up helping you be able to get focus closer to your object, whatever you're trying to get to. And so you're able to make, essentially it makes the image much bigger. So these extension tube tubes, the ones that I bought, they come in a set of three. And so they come in three different sizes. They come in a 36 millimeter, a 20 millimeter, and a 12 millimeter. And so you can take them apart, and so you can use them individually if you like, like this, or you can put them all together, and you can use them all together if you want. You can use them all together, or you can even buy multiple ones of these and put them together. It doesn't really matter. But the cool thing about extension tubes are is that there's no uh, there's no lens. It's just an opening that makes it kind of like a spacer. So that's the cool thing about that's why they don't cost very much because there's no there's no glass. So we're going to go through what those all look like. But I wanted to kind of explain to you why I was taking pictures of what I was going to take pictures of. I know a lot of people out there on the internet world, what they do is they go and they go outside and they take pictures of bugs and plants and lots of different things, which are great. That's all great and cool. But everybody has different sized bugs and different sized plants and different size things. And so I wanted to really take a photo of something that 
everybody has, number one. Also, as well as, it would just make sense to something that you are familiar with so you know exactly how much it's getting enlarged. So I figure, why not take a picture of the keyboard, or specifically one key of the keyboard? I figure that would really give you the sense of how close you can get, helps you really understand macro photography and adding these things. Now, there are a few other things that I added to help me on this uh, little macro journey. So I have this. This looks like a crazy piece of equipment, I know. But what this is called is essentially a macro rail. And you put your camera up here and you attach the tripod down here and this slides back and forth so you can focus. It also can move side to side if you want to. But this really helps in focusing because you can put your camera on the focus peaking and then all you have to do is turn the knob and then and you can look at the back of your screen and see when everything is actually in focus. That really helps a lot. I definitely would recommend one of these. They're not real expensive, but they're not real cheap. It depends on where you go. They range from, you know, $40 up to several hundred dollars. Um, this one happens to be about 70 bucks. But you can just, all depends on what you want. It's not necessary, but it definitely does help. And the other thing that I used just um, to help a little bit with seeing some of the texture and also just so it wasn't quite so dark, I used um, this little light. This is a nice little light. It uh, does help with, uh, you know, the light up things when you need to. It's really inexpensive. It's a, it was only like 16 bucks. Nice little light to carry around in your backpack in case you need a little extra light. Oh, and I'll tell you the price. The price of a set of these extension tubes, they were uh, 43 bucks for a set of ex these extension tubes. Now you can get ones a little cheaper than that, and you can get ones that are more expensive than that. Um, I tried to get something with uh, metal, you know, a metal back. So that would, I felt that that would be a little bit uh, more safer, a little bit better. Um, but that was pretty much, and also these come with the connection points um, to be able to still control focus if you really want to on your lens. But the way we're doing it today doesn't really apply because we're putting the lens backwards on the camera or on the extension tube. So it doesn't really matter anyway. And like I said before, the ring that uh, is only 10, about 10 bucks. So that's really inexpensive. So let's get into it and let's get into how I took these pictures and how they, uh, how they look depending on what we used here. Okay, so first what I did was I just took my normal 40 millimeter pancake lens, put it on my camera and focused as close as I could to the M and took a picture and got as close as I possibly could. And this is as close as this lens would allow me to get, which isn't bad. It's funny that even on this lens, it says macro, which it's not really macro, but that's okay. We're going to be fixing that in a minute, but it's decent. It does actually get fairly close to objects, but uh, we're going to get much closer than that. So there's your first image. So now all we're going to do is we're going to flip this uh, lens around and we're going to put it on the camera with the, the ring, the reverse ring. So we can put this camera, this lens on backwards. Okay, so here's that photo. Now you can see that's a huge difference. It's a huge jump between our last image and the next image. That's a really big jump. So really, if you really wanted to just buy the ring, you're, you know, well on your way to at least B 
being able to do something much closer than you normally would ever be able to do. But now we're going to go one step further. We're going to do this lens reversed and we're going to do all these extension tubes together and we're going to put those together on the camera and see how close we can get. What image do we get? So we get this image here. That is even closer. That's pretty amazing. And so that looks pretty darn nice. But I have a special secret for you guys. I also, for a short time, I had also a bellows that was designed specifically also for doing macro photography. Unfortunately, I promptly broke it. So it was kind of cheap. The uh, camera fell off the tripod because you can't really attach the tripod, attach the camera to the tripod with the, uh, the bellows and this thing very well. It just doesn't work unless you modify the bottom of the bellows. So I know that now. But we're going to attach the lens and the extension tubes and use the bellows fully extended and we're going to show you what picture I get out of that and see how close can we get. That is the next picture. That is darn close. That's pretty amazing. You can see the texture of the key. You can see the texture of the paint. Everything. That is darn close. And if you guys are interested in the bellows, it actually is pretty uh, inexpensive. It's only 34 bucks. So it's not bad. But like I said, I broke off the little, uh, the little pin so you can remove the lens. So I sent it back. And I'm going to be just buying another set of these extension tubes, which won't be quite as far as uh, using the um, bellows, but that's okay. I can always buy more extension tubes later. All right, so that is our final photo, and that is truly a macro photo. It is very, very close. And that's all you need to do is be able to have a, definitely a tripod because when you do use um, extension tubes that does cut your light every time you add more extension tubes you lose a little bit of light so you definitely have to have a lot of light so something that you'll want to consider is either doing if you're doing in studio stuff you definitely will have to have you know some good size some good lighting or you will want to use you know the flash with a diffuser which you've probably maybe you've seen some of that stuff i don't have one of those yet but i'm planning on buying one and uh, that will help with lighting up whatever is in front of your camera really well and very nicely and then you don't have to have your shutter speed so slow but right now I don't have uh, one of those, so I have to just continue using the shutter speed much lower and go with that. But then you definitely need a tripod because it's very difficult to get uh, a clear picture of using with a low ISO. And also when you're doing macro photography, you need to use quite a bit higher f-stop, which is very important, somewhere between f8 to f11 somewhere in there is usually the most commonly used f-stop for for macro photography somewhere in there um, if you do something much uh, do wide open you'll have a very very small airplane that'll be in focus and if you do it the other way around and you do it too far apparently it causes weird flares and do and does other odd bad things as well as it makes it really really dark and then you wouldn't be able to take a, a photograph because it's just it'd be too, just too dark it would be very difficult to get enough light so that is how you do that 
just to give you a general description of how I take my photos for right now. And let me know in the comments, what is your setup? What do you like to do? And let me know if you have any other questions. I know there's a lot of other different little uh, tricks and tips that have to do with macro photography. And like I was saying, this isn't uh, to go over all those different things and how to do macro photography and all that, but just kind of going over the equipment. So till next time, we'll catch you on the trail. But wait, where's all the cool close-up pictures of, of insects? All right, I got you, I got you. So I wanted to show you a couple pictures that I took of a spider. So I found this little guy in my basement downstairs. He was all dried up and dead, but it is winter time. And so there's not a lot of insects, but I was able to grab this little guy and I put him on a plant that I had and I took a picture of him and I'll show you those two pictures. But all I used was the um, 40 millimeter pancake lens with the reverse ring. So we put the pancake lens on backwards and the set of three extension tubes. And I also used the little tiny light that I showed you. I did do focus bracketing on both of these pictures. So you'd be able to have a little more of this little spider in focus. Maybe at some point I will do a tutorial on that. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do a tutorial on that. And that's it. I just was close to a window and I also used that little light. And this is what I got. That's pretty darn close. It's pretty amazing. Amazing to think those are always crawling around our house. But there you go. There's some cool pictures of a spider. That's pretty darn close of a, of the spider there. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed the pictures. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, tutorial of what you need macro photography on a budget. Until next time, happy shooting and stay safe out there.